Uh, good afternoon. My name is Angela Kutsi, Chair of Romani Studies Program and Academic Director of the Roma Graduate Preparation Program. So I'm pleased to welcome you on this conference challenging the reproduction of inequality through higher education, critical approaches in Romani studies and beyond. Um, so the Romani Studies Program at CU, it, uh, we organize this conference in cooperation with the Yehuda Alkana Center for Teaching, Learning and Higher Education Research. Um, with the Roma program at FXB Center for Health and Human Rights at Harvard University, and with the Critical Romani Studies Department at Syracuse University. So we are really happy and very grateful for this collaboration and cooperation, as well as uh, a support to organize uh, the conference, which is really an historic moment as well. But before we're going to go into that, I just would like to announce that. Uh, we will have um, a cameraman in the room, right? Uh, but when you register for the conference, so you sign the consent um, to take a picture about you and record the conference as well. And, and also I would like to welcome those of you who are uh, online and join this conference. And, and we are very exciting. Um, actually to celebrate our 20th anniversary and um, being surrounded by our allies and colleagues and scholars of Romani studies, academic partners from department across and beyond the university, as well as many generation of Roma Access Program alumni who have come across from across Europe to participate in this event and meet each other again for a long awaited on-site and online reunion. So in 2004, the Central European University took a very courageous step uh, forward and launched the first Roma Access Program. And as we know that it was called uh, by various names, RAP, RELP, and RGPP. And since 2017, the CU Romani Studies Program become an academic unit which runs the Roma Graduate Preparation Program, as well as the full advanced certificate program for CU masters and PhD students. And um, and I think it's important to highlight that the CU's Roma Access programs have supported approximately 400 aspiring grand Roma scholars from 20 European countries to access higher education. Over 80% of RGPP students have been accepted to master's programs worldwide and more than 5% have gone on to PhD programs. And I see some of you here in the room as well. And I think you joined online. So besides academia and research, many RGPP graduates works for super, uh, supranational organization, national governments, international Romani organization, NGOs, and some of them even launched their own NGOs as well. Our alumni have gone on to take leading roles in the public and private sector and start their own businesses. They are government officials, lawyers, consultants, trainers, teachers, and human rights advocates. Some have even gone on to become a ministers of parliament in their countries and work in the European parliament. So this program would not exist without the arduous work and efforts of our teachers and tutors. And please applaud them. <laughs> also the generous support of our donors. And I just would like to highlight a few of them. Uh, the Open Society Foundations and um, and um, various offices and programs support, have supported this program, such as the Higher Education Program, Roma Initiative Office, OSAN, the Open Society University Network. So we are really, really grateful for them. Also the Valex Foundation, Roma Educational Fund, Ford Foundation, Robert Bosch Shiftung, Sigrid Rosing Trust, Bader Philanthropist, and many others actually. And, um, and we are really, really grateful for their generous support. 
And also I would like to mention a few academic program directors and managers. We have to go back and delve into our materials and you know somehow reconstruct our um, institutional history. Sophie Hollett, Paul Rowe, David Ross Raidu, <laughs> Eva Fodor, Pram Kumar Rajaram, Matya Sabo, Gina Montanel, Julius Rostash, and myself. And we are really, really grateful for them. So please applaud for them. <laughs> and um, and actually, we could not find a better way to celebrate May 16, as many of you know, as the Romani Resistance Day. And um, the Council of Europe recognized as a, as a, um, to celebrate Romani Resistance Day. So it, it was a courageous revolt of May 16, 1944, and it was a fight for the right to life and humanity. And, um, and widely referred uh, to as a Romani Resistance Day. And I think um, it's, um, it's such a great thing to celebrate the Romani Resistance Day together with the 20th anniversary of the Roma graduate uh, preparatory program. And we still believe that education could and should play a very crucial role in dismantling structural inequality, marginalization, discrimination, and prejudice, and in enabling Roma to fulfill their potential and participate equally in all areas of modern society. And I think um, this is a historic day, and please celebrate with us. And, um, and we are really grateful uh, that you are here and, and supporting us in this support. Thank you so much. to ask Eva Fodor, who is not just the former of the former academic director of RGPP, but also prorector for teaching and learning to say a few words. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Angela, for inviting me to, to open this conference. So let me welcome you at this conference. I'm challenging the reproduction, very long title, challenging the reproduction of inequalities through higher education but I think a very timely title. And also the 20th birthday of uh, uh, birthday celebration of the Roma Access Program, which as Angela mentioned, has had many different names, but I'm just going to call it the Roma Access Program. You know what I'm talking about. So first, let me, uh, let me say a quick heartfelt thank you to the organizers of uh, this conference, <laughs> not just the participants, but the organizers, because uh, we all know that it's a lot of work to do, to put something like this together. And it has such a rich program and I hope you're gonna have a good time, but you couldn't do that without all the people who put a lot of work into bringing this together. So thank you, Angela, and thank you, Esther, and everybody else who, who participated in, in, in working on this. I am personally pleased and happy to be here because as Angela mentioned, I was the director of the Roma Access Program uh, for a few years almost a decade ago, I thought about it, I tried to figure out when exactly, but, it, and I was, it was, it was really strange to, to remember that it was all, over 10 years ago. And those few years were possibly the most gratifying years of, uh, of my time at CU. It was wonderful to see the, this program develop. And first of all, to learn about it, to, to, to learn how it works. And it was wonderful to, uh, to follow and accompany some of you are uh, present and some of you not present through uh, the program, through the years, uh, through your years in the program. So I've seen firsthand the impact of what the Roma Access Program has had large and small. So I, I you know, the small ones, I'm gonna mention the large ones, the fact that so many of you have gone out to do wonderful things, um, but the small ones were just as important. So I remember meeting students uh, who could barely speak English, but then could express themselves, you know, in three months' time, thanks to your wonderful English teachers, some of whom is the, the camera person <laughs> over there. <laughs> um, um, we could converse and have a great discussion in three months' time. It was wonderful to see this change. It's also great um, to, it was wonderful to listen to, to you guys talking to each other, coming from 
similar backgrounds, but very different, coming from Romani communities in different countries, speaking the same, but yeah, different languages and trying to negotiate the meaning of uh, being Roma in Central and Eastern Europe. Those were wonderful discussions and I'm, I'm, I'm really honored to have been part of at least some of them. I'm sure that, that, that they go on. Um, Angela mentioned the, the many wonderful achievements, so I'm not gonna uh, repeat that. Uh, but I, I just hope that uh, as much as you're shaping our lives, this program also has contributed to what you're doing now and will have a permanent or does have or will have a permanent impact of, on who you are and, and, and what you will be able to achieve. I want to, please come sit down. <laughs> Um, I want to especially welcome and encourage those of you who are graduating. I understand that there are seven of you at least here who are going to finish the program this year. Um, these are very difficult times to, to begin your career, but I guess everything is a difficult time. There's no, there hasn't been a lot of times which were not difficult, but you have received good training and you've landed in, in, in a community of people that I hope that you can rely on for the rest of your careers and also who would be examples for you about what can be achieved, what can be done with, with lots of work and lots of perseverance, because of course the obstacles that Angela also mentioned are, are still out there. Um, and, and those are the ones that we have to dismantle together. I think you're strong and, uh, and, and I really wish you the best of luck navigating those obstacles and dismantling these obstacles in the future. Now the topic of this conference can't be more timely um, institutions of higher education are closing down in large numbers. I just got, you know, I get email after email about departments closing because uh, they don't receive state funding, the state funding has been cut, et cetera. Or, you know, the, the state, as state funds are withdrawn, the quality of higher education suffers. And in fact, is bifurcating. Inequalities are being exacerbated. Inequal for the next generation, inequalities are, are, uh, are, are created within the higher education system. Those who can afford to pay you know, tens of thousands of dollars or euros would have, ac have access to, to, uh, to good quality education, but those who, are, who, who don't have those resources are often left um, without access to, to, um, to education or access uh, to education, which is not really personalized where they cannot develop their full potentials as efficiently or as well as as they would otherwise. Um, and of course, this is happening at the moment when um, the labor market rewards higher educational degrees more and more. So inequalities are growing. This is higher education as is now is reproducing inequalities. And this is something that we all collectively have to think about. And I hope that uh, as you're uh, in your discussions, you'll be able to come up with some ideas. We, uh, we should definitely, want, we definitely want to know about that. Because CU, of course, finds itself um, impacted by all these trends. We cannot really separate ourselves from our context and, and our environment and from this particular socioeconomic uh, or geopolitical uh, situation. It is increasingly difficult to get funding uh, uh, for, uh, for our education as well, and our costs are going up. So we find ourselves in a position where we need to change things. We need to... Uh, we need to uh, we need to figure out how we can exist in the future. And I haven't even mentioned the political and ideological attacks against universities, which is something that we all have to have to um, have to respond to on on an everyday basis. Um, I don't have a blueprint. We don't have a blueprint about how to respond to these challenges. And as I said, I hope that this conference and the discussions will come up with at least some suggestions and ideas that we can then continue the discussion about. As some of you are aware, um, CEU is moving in new directions. Establish, we are establishing ourselves in Vienna and focusing more on undergraduate training, changing our, our, our graduate programs as well. But one thing will not change, and that is CEU is per, CEU's firm commitment to continuing and funding the Roma Access Program, RGPP. Um, you are a very important part of the university and the university's mission, the university's past, the university's history, and the university's future. So with that, another warm, warm welcome, and I wish you the best for the rest of this conference and meeting. Thank you, Eva, for these really encouraging words that um, 
knowing the fact that the CU is really uh, taking the new direction, but you're going to remain uh, as a uh, supporters behind us. Um, 